Greetings, your viewing Express Food. My name is Paula. As you all know very much, we are about marriage on Express Food. We have been here in this topic position for the past two months or so, and we are not stopping because we are going through the love stories of the Bible. We are learning from the teaching of the Word and from getting that inspiration in the area of revelation knowledge, how relationships are, be, are to be treated healthily, God's way. In the midst of it all, we understand that the anointing is present to heal bad marriages. What do I mean by bad marriages? Marriages that are in marriages that are in trouble. So the anointing is present to deliver and heal marriages, also relationships, and it may be also relationships of all kinds, any kind, in the area of family members, because we are seeing the behavior and patterns of people and the way they communicate and speak to each other according to God's word. We want to stay focused now in the area of marriage, love, romance, relationships, healthy communication, and sexuality. Now, we're in the topic, the interests of Ruth and Boaz, and that has now begun. You want to be sure to look up at the other videos, look at the above me in the video here. You'll see the name Paula Bunsey Ministries. Go into that page. I welcome you to do so now. If you have not liked that page, you need to do so now. I welcome you. Go into the page and scroll down. You will see a lot of videos based on these topics because we have been on this topic for the past two months. I am going to read you a passage of scripture introduction taken from Ecclesiastes chapters 4, reading from verses 9 and 12. Before I go there, you can, you can get that um, reading of scripture. You want to take notes, write it down. This is what I want you to know. I'm about bringing men and women together. I'm about bringing the man and the woman together. Over the ages and the decades, the devil has managed to intercept, has managed to influence men and women to be at war with each other, fighting the species. We have a lot of chaos in the world today where people cannot identify their proper gender. They are having gender confusion. That's what I say gender confusion and we want to bring back the strength of the man and the woman not to be at war or in opposition of each other not to look at each other as aliens to fight with each other but bring them together to understand that from the beginning god created them to join together to be together in harmony and in peace to help each other to build each other to strengthen each other and to keep each other's comfort and company and this is the script here that we are going to read to bring that alive. Ecclesiastes chapters 4, reading from verse 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. Pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up so you are never better alone. We have so many people in the world today living alone and loving it. But I'll tell you something. You are never better alone all by yourself. Everyone needs a helping hand. Look at this verse 11. Also, if two lie down together, that's referring to marriage, man and woman. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Verse 12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. You see, if... If I have um, some enemies fighting against me and I have no other voice to stand with me, I may be completely defeated. But when someone stands together with me and raises a voice for me and with me, I will get some backup support and help right there. Two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And there we could see family form. Two means the husband and the wife. And then the three strand cord is the child or children cannot be easily broken. That's uh, one of the ways that you can look at it. But it's saying two is better than one. And then when you have three, meaning the more people stand with you, the better that you are. So you are not designed by God to be all alone, 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 alone. Oh no. God will send you the right spouse. I declare it and decree to be so. I declare in and about and upon your marriage right now, who, those of you who are having trouble, that God will orchestrate things in such a manner to fix it. 
bring deliverance and healing you have to believe with me because i'm believing for you so you have to believe with me i am the other person that is standing in agreement with you for your breakthrough blessing i believe god to bring people together with these videos i believe god to bring about new understanding so that people will stop fighting i believe god to heal broken marriages i believe god to deliver people from struggles and and situations in their marriages i believe god to heal relationships in general let's go quickly because you know how time passes express word is designed as a 20 minute video i've deliberately added on an extra five just in case we cross that 20 minutes i'm not um planning to do that but let's get into book of let's get into book of root we're going to investigate that story now i'm going to give you some introduction on root there are many people that are looking at me that are not aware naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law. Naomi and her husband left Bethlehem, Jerusalem, where they belonged, where they lived. Her husband's name is Eli Mehlech. And they went because Bethlehem was experiencing a famine, a lack at the time. And they went to Moab. Moab was not far from Bethlehem. Now Moab, I would say, represents death. Here's why. In Moab, Naomi and her husband Eli Mehlech had two sons and they grew to be big men and they took wives. Okay, so they took wives. Ruth was one of the wives um, of one of the sons. And this is what happened in Moab. Naomi's husband died. That's mother-in-law Naomi. Then Ruth's husband died. And the, the other daughter-in-law, her husband died also. So here it is, Naomi, her husband died together with her two men, her two male sons. So in Moab, all the men died. That's not good. So these ladies are now left. And in those days, in ancient of days, um, women would highly depend on being redeemed by getting married to a man getting married to a man would mean i am now redeemed i am now well provided for well taken care of i now have a name i have taken the last name of this man and so i will make children for him and my family lineage will live on and i will have a legacy so women look to be redeemed by men so here it is we have these three women and they have totally lost all their lives in these men so Naomi pleaded with her two daughters tried to um, insist that they should go back to their families where they came from she's now heading back to Bethlehem where she belongs where she came from and one of her daughter-in-laws insisted I am NOT going back to my family I am going to remain clinged and tied on to you and i'm going to follow you into bethlehem and that daughter-in-law is root now i just give you an introduction to the story there using my own words that's about it i think i covered it there the surface of it at the beginning because i'm not going to read from chapters one we are going to read from chapters two let's look at chapters two starting from verse one let's see how much ground we can cover now we are investigating and sticking upon the topic of romance how men and women met in the bible how god designed the relationship together and brought them together and gave his confirmation and blessed them let's look at this now naomi reading from book of ruth chapters 2 now naomi that's mother-in-law had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Eli Mehlech. Eli Mehlech was is, is her deceased husband. But she had some relative remaining in Bethlehem, referring to her husband. A man of standing. So he had he has a good name, good identity, um, good legacy. A man of standing, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields so they are now in Bethlehem 
and they're trying to start a new life. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone whose eyes I find favor. So Ruth understood, well, here I am, I'm in a strange land. I'm with my mother-in-law, we are two women, and something has to happen here. I have to go out to work. And I, we have to have faith in finding favor in work and getting food for ourselves. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. Now, for those of you who do not know, because I've searched it already, the word gleaning literally in, in, in like manner means almost like begging for grain. So it was harvest time and they were going to pick the grain of the rice field, whatever may have been growing. And gleaning means that people who don't own a field, who is not working as a harvester, would go on harvest time because it's harvest time now in Bethlehem. And while the workmen are uh, gathering the sheaves and the grains and whatever the case may be and bundling it, whatever fell off of their arms or hands or whatever mach machinery would have been used at that time, um, the gleaners, which are the beggars, would pick up behind them. Look at this. Wow. I declare today in about an upon your life that the position that you are in today where you have appeared to lose everything and everyone and you may feel as though you're gleaning like a beggar you're in a perfect position to be blessed in a big way hold on don't lose me with this story and let's go along and see what's happening here as it turned out she found herself working in a field belonging to boaz now that's the same man who is relative to naomi who has a good standing order who was from the clan of elimelech that's the same man Verse 4, just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. So here it is, Ruth went out looking for work. She, well, she went out gleaning and she ended up in the same field that belongs to Boaz. And as she is there picking up what fell off or what is left over, Boaz comes on the scene and he's checking up on his field. So he's... Um, most likely on his horse. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. Now I just want to pause for a second because I forgot to mention in the beginning what we'll be seeing in this love story. We'll be seeing a lot of information for the women folk. No problem. The men are to stay right there because I'll tell you why. This is what we are um, uh, capturing in a nutshell for the man and the woman. The women is going to get a perfect example of how a godly man or a good righteous man behaves when he meets the woman that he's interested in. So you are going to get some clues, a lot of clues and things and signs to look for in Bo Boaz behavior and in his speech. I tell you today, listen to me carefully. Speech is very important in today's world there is vocabulary throwing about all over the place social media is hot wild and rampant we see advertisement we see movies i'm telling you you're going to see what i'm telling you about in a short while speech the way how you speak to me says a lot about about how you see me and consider me says a lot about your heart towards me the words that you use to speak to me will say a lot about your intentions and motives towards me so the ladies are going to see in the behavior of boaz his doing and his words what they are to look for in that right man in that man that God is going to send for them that, uh, and even in the position that you are in in your marriage whatever struggles or problems you are having you are going to see what is righteous treatment what, what is godly pure love treatment okay now look at this and the men folk while you are looking at me and looking at this video you are going to see how a man of God, a righteous man, a good man, or a right man, behaves and speak. So you within yourself now will, will be able to detect, wow, I, maybe I should stop speaking that way, maybe I should stop doing this, 
or you would say wow i actually have it down packed i mean i'm just like boaz whatever the case may be so the men are getting their example from boaz his behavior and his speech and the women are getting what to look for in that good man that god is sending and here I'm reading verse 4 again. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Notice Boaz. From the moment he arrives and he's present, his out of his mouth did not come curses. It came, there came blessings. So we, we are looking at Boaz. His mouth is at peace. He is blessing the people. The Lord bless you, they call back. So he said, the Lord be with you. And they said, the Lord bless you. Look at this, verse 5. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? Now we're getting to the, to the point here. Remember, we are all about romance, relationship, and marriage. And you want to take notes and write this down, especially for the ladies. And the men know that this is very true. When a man is looking at a certain woman or is interested in a certain woman he will recognize her amongst many women we have covered this already but i'm reiterating it again it's very important in the field ruth was gleaning or working together with many other women that boaz had in his field and he noticed her amongst the many women women now a man who is interested in a certain woman will ask and inquire about her. You're taking notes, write this down. The man for you will have God in his mouth. He said, he greeted his workers and he said, uh, peace be with you, the Lord be with you. That's what he said, the Lord, the Lord be with you. And they turned around and said, the Lord bless you. So the man for you will have God in his mouth. He will bless and not curse. The man who is interested in you will notice you amongst many women and ask about you and inquire of you. Ladies, please take that down. You don't have to, and I don't like to say the word chase, but you don't have to run after or go after or continuously pursue behind any man. In this sense, that if a man is really genuinely interested in you, he will inquire of you, find out about you, and he will recognize you amidst and amongst the crowd. Who is that girl? Wow. Verse 5, Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? 6, the foreman replied, she is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean. So they are, they are telling Boaz um, the whole story about why she's in the field. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now. So they are giving him a brief report about her. Except for a short rest in the shelter. Verse 8. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter... Notice how he's addressing her. So you see, I'm not saying that the men today would call a, a, a big woman that they are interested in daughter. Okay, now we're understanding the history of this story. And I must make mention now that Boaz was sort of much older than Ruth. And so that is why he would have called her my daughter. My daughter, listen to me. Do not go and glean. Now, so we're paying attention to how Boaz is treating with root. Listen carefully. The man for you, you want to write this down. The man who is interested in you will lay his mark on you and will, with, will let his friends and company know, hey, she is mine. Don't touch her. Why did you say that? And look at it. The, the, the verse 8. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. And now he's protecting her in front immediately don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here stay here with my servant girls watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls 
I have told the men, and I want to reiterate on this, I have told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. So we see here the behavior of Boaz, how he treats with the woman that he likes and he's interested in. And I'm talking like that because you will see later on in the story what happens. We are taking it piece by piece, the romantic part of them coming together. So Boaz as a man is now covering Ruth. He's already covering her. She, he's not married to her. He's not married to her yet. But he's covering her in the sense that he's protecting her. He's also providing for her. He's saying, stay in my field, glean how much you want. <laughs> stay with the young ladies, keep in company. And I've warned my men not to touch you, not to interfere with you. And so when a man is zooming on a certain woman, he would make it clear to his uh, accompaniment, those who are around him, the other men folk, stay away. Don't touch her. Don't touch that. She is mine. Don't interfere. I have put my mark on her. I'm letting you know because this is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. The behavior of Boaz, again, he, he literally covered her and protected her by telling her, stay here. You are on safe ground. You will have green. You will have provision. You will have protection. And you want to write this down. I think I said it before in a video before, but I'm going to repeat it again. A good man, a righteous man, the right man, who is the right man? The right man is a man that will do the right thing. Is a man who would protect what he adores, who he adores, and will provide for who he adores. So a good husband, a good husband to be, a good man that will make a, a great husband will have these two things going for him and it will become easy no matter how hard he has to work to get that done. He will protect the woman that he's interested with. He will protect his wife and he will provide for the woman and he will show that behavioral traits. He will show those traits from up front, even in the dating process, even in the interest process, even from the very beginning, you will notice he's making sure that it does not cost you. Now, don't take that the wrong way. He's making sure that he put his foot forward in the area of giving you less stress and it does not cause you to meet with him or to come together with him and to be with him. He is making sure that he provides. He's making sure that he's, he puts forward as a man to protect you and to provide. I'm going to, I've crossed it 20 minutes. I'm going to stop in two minutes. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're looking at verse um, 10. At this she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? Verse 11, Boaz replied, I have been told all about you. Now, what, what does this mean? What are we looking at here? Boaz had already heard that Ruth came into town back with Naomi, um, which, is, which was his relative wife. And he had already probably saw her from a distance prior to that. And he was already looking at her with interest. Listen to me very well. And he was already inquiring of her. And whether it be word and messages came to him first, or whether it be he was inquiring of her first, there were word and messages passing around about Ruth. The man who is interested in you with all good motive and intention will find out about you will will run a search on you and and will get to hear about you and know about you it will be his interest we're coming to our close now father we give you thanks and praise for this word don't lose me with this teaching with the story um we are going to continue next fortnight on express word Please share this video with someone, although we are just getting in a little bit at a time, the little bit 
is very good, solid information that you need. Amen, beloved. I pray, my God, that the people who listen to this video will receive